Hi everyone, this is Mary here and we are going to do a little review of trigonometry, um, some vector addition and projectile motion in Chapter 3. This video we are going to concentrate on a review of trigonometry. And I understand that for some of you this is just a review. You're very good at trigonometry, you've had courses in it recently, so as in all videos, please make sure you're your own best friend. Um, fast forward if you need to, pause and work through the problems with me if you need to. I also understand there are some of you who are watching this who have never had trigonometry, and we're going to go through just what is required for our physics class. So this is not equivalent to an entire course of trigonometry, it's just the highlights. Trigonometry is the mathematics that deals with the sides and the angles of triangles. Within this course, we're going to work with 90 degree or right angled triangles, um, and that just keeps it a lot simpler. Now, if you think you might be able to skip this section, here's what I'm going to ask you to do. Take this data and this triangle and solve for all of these three unknowns, and if you can do that, then you're probably pretty good and you can continue on to the next video. If you know that you can't do that, then hang with me. This video is all for you. Did you get the answers to that triangle right? Well, yay, then onward you go, and for the rest of us, let's keep talking about trigonometry. In trigonometry, we, as I said, we're going to stick with 90 degree angles. So a 90 degree angle is going to be in one corner, and this little box kind of integrates, indicates that 90 degree angle. The sum of all of the angles in a triangle is 180 degrees. And we're going to use this all over the place. So for example, if any triangle has 180 degrees and there are 90 degrees here, then these two other angles must add up to 90. So if this one's 30, what's this one going to be? Yeah, that one's going to be 60 degrees. If this one is 10 degrees, what's this one going to be? Well, then that one's going to have to be 80. Common symbols we use for angles are theta, and theta um, kind of looks like the planet Saturn, and phi, Greek letter phi, and it's said phi phi fo fum like the blood of an Englishman from the old nursery rhyme. Somewhere in your past, I know you have experienced Pythagorean's theorem. Now, Pythagorean's theorem works for a right triangle, and it says a squared plus b squared equals c squared. If you don't have this in your long-term memory, make sure you put that on your formula sheet. And a and B, it doesn't matter which side we call A or which side we call B, but it's very important that C is always that long side, also known as the hypotenuse. So hit pause, see if you can solve for C. Now when I did it, I got 10.3. You have to be able to get the numbers into and out of your calculator. The next one gets a little bit trickier because we're not solving for the long side, we're solving for one of the short sides. So the math is going to be c squared minus b squared, square root of the difference between those two, and when I did that, I got 135 for a. We're going to spend a long time talking about sine, cosine, and tangent. These are ratios, ratios that were discovered and have been used for thousands of years. Um, ancient Islamic Egyptian mathematicians have used these in design and architecture for, for many, 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 many years. For any particular angle, let's say you've got a 30 degree angle, it doesn't matter if you're talking about a really small triangle or a very large triangle, the ratio between the length of the adjacent side, the side next to the angle, and the opposite side will always be the same. And it doesn't matter if you've got a supersized triangle or you've got a wee itty bitty triangle. Those ratios are the sine, the cosine, and the tangent. Ratios are always a comparison of one number divided by another number, and that means that these are unitless um, numbers. Now sine, cosine, and tangent. These are the definitions of sine, cosine, and tangent. Hit pause, copy this down. This is something you must have. And if you need help remembering which side is which, the long side opposite the angle, that is called the hypotenuse. 
um, determining what's the adjacent and what's the opposite, you must first choose the angle that you are going to be dealing with. So if I am dealing with this angle theta, the side next to it is going to be the adjacent, and the side that does not touch it is going to be the opposite. SOHCAHTOA is a little memory mnemonic device that we're going to use very often to help remember these three equations. Sine is opposite divided by hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent divided by hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. Let's do some math. So here is a triangle, and I want to solve for the three unknown pieces. First, let's solve for this unknown angle. We know that the sum of the angles in here has to be 180 degrees. This is 90, so 90 minus 15 is 75, so this angle up here is 75 degrees. Now, how am I going to find the sides? Well, I'm going to use trigonometry. And the first thing you must do is choose the angle that you're going to be working with. So I have chosen, I'm going to use the 15 degree angle because I have made errors and subtraction, so I go back to raw data whenever I can. If this is my angle, then this is the side adjacent, this is the side opposite, and this is the hypotenuse. So how do I pick out my trig function? Well, I do as I always do in physics. I write down what I know and what I'm looking for. I'm looking for an adjacent. I know my hypotenuse is 20 meters, and I know theta is 15 degrees. So then I look at so ka toa and I want the trig function that has in it adjacent and hypotenuse. Well, both sine and cosine have hypotenuse. Tangent does not. And which one has adjacent? That little a stands for adjacent. That is cosine. So I'm going to use cosine of theta is adjacent divided by hypotenuse. And I'm solving for my adjacent side. I've got to do a wee bit of algebra. The adjacent side is going to be equal to the cosine of 15 degrees times the hypotenuse of 20 meters. And when I do that, I ended up with 19.3 for the length of side y. Once you have that, you can use Pythagoras to find x, but we're practicing trig functions. So I'm going to use a trig function to find x. x is my opposite side, and I'm going to stick with my raw data. Knowing my hypotenuse, looking for my opposite, I'm going to choose sine. The sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. So my opposite side is going to be equal to the sine of 15 times my hypotenuse of 20, and when I did that, I got 5.2 meters. Now, if you're doing these problems with me and you're not getting the right answer, please check your calculator and make sure it is in degree mode. Depending upon where and when you had your last math class, it might depend on what settings your math instructor left your calculator in. If you have a simple little TI-30 calculator, um, somewhere on it is a DRG button for degrees, radians, and gradients. If you hit that button, toggle over to degrees, then hit enter to choose that, you're going to be in good shape. If you have a fancy graphing calculator, hit the mode button. The mode button is going to bring up this screen. Go down to the line that says radians or degrees. This course we're going to stick in degrees. Toggle over to degrees. Hit enter. Hit clear to clear that screen and you should be in degrees. Life should be good. Now if you have another calculator, Casio or something else, I apologize, I'm not the expert on every calculator out there, and I highly recommend you just Google search uh, how to make sure you are in degree mode. Let's do another triangle. So if you feel like you got this, hit pause, answer these questions, and then let's uh, double check that you and I agree. Now I'm looking for the hypotenuse. What's the easiest way to find that? Well, using good old Pythagorean's theorem. And when I do that, h gives me 79.3 meters per second. Now I have to figure out angles. And like I said, I like to go back to raw data. Sometimes you cannot, but I'm going to because I want to practice those trig functions. If I want to find theta, I know the adjacent side, and this is adjacent because it's next to my angle. This is the opposite side. 
So the tangent of theta is going to be the opposite divided by the adjacent. The opposite is 31. The adjacent is 73. Now if you push that through your calculator, what you get is not the angle, but is the tangent to the angle. You're going to have to press a button or two to get from tangent back to the angle. Somewhere on your calculator there is a second tangent button or a second tangent button somewhere in, in here um, in order to go from that tangent back to the angle. Now when I do this, theta ends up being 23 degrees. Then these two must equal 90, so 90 minus 23, the other angle, is 67. You got this? Okay. See if you do. Hit pause, see if you can fill all those out, and then I'll give you the answers in a moment. When I did this, for k, I got 103. For phi, I got 33.8. And for theta, I got 56.2. Okay, folks, onward and upward. See you soon.